No, 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 it's not clickbait. We're gonna talk about how you can hit the ball longer and straighter. And no, they are not mutually exclusive. They are going to work together. So we're gonna use this funny little device here to show you how it's done. What's going on, Scott Hogan here. We are back in the studio. We are gonna be firing up the flight scope and we're gonna be talking about how to help you hit the ball longer and straighter. I know, you're like, hey, if you have the magic secret to that, why aren't you a billionaire already in the teaching world? Well, honestly, it's something that when I talk with people, they are thinking about, hey, I wanna just hit the ball straighter. I wanna hit it longer, you know, whatever. They don't necessarily think about doing both of these items together, but in reality, I find that it is true. If you wanna hit the ball better, you are typically gonna hit it longer and straighter if you understand how to work your swing. So. We're gonna be using these devices here that I picked up at the PGA show. I really have enjoyed using these. Uh, these are called the force pedal. And we're gonna start talking about how to get more force into your swing, which lets you do a couple of key things. One, generate club head speed. That's going to make it where you can have potentially more distance. It's also gonna let you understand how to make better contact. That is how you turn that speed into distance. It's also gonna help you understand how to generate more rotation, which is going to help you turn that speed and distance into accuracy as well. So we're gonna get into all of that. Let's jump into it. All right, so when we start talking about trying to get the ball to go longer and straighter, there's a couple of things that we have to realize, okay? One, we have to use the ground when we are swinging. So easily the number one thing that I see from people that do not hit the ball far enough and have an issue with trying to get the ball to go straighter is they just are very, very quiet with their body. They're not using their legs enough in their swing. That's why these force pedals can be very valuable to us as we go. So I'm gonna set one up. Now we can set these up on both feet, but for today's purposes, I'm gonna set one just up on my lead foot. We'll set our other one off to the side. We're gonna talk about getting into the ground and what does that do for us? as we go to hit the golf ball. So when I'm swinging, okay, what happens is we get what's called ground reaction forces. So when we push into the ground, we actually get a return from the ground and that is what helps us start generating some power. It's just like when we go to jump. If I go ahead and push down into the ground, I'm going to get a return where it pushes me upwards. In golf, what ends up happening is that motion where if I go back and I push is going to push up and because of how we are set up and how things are working, that push actually comes and it pushes the club and it pushes my body in a way which we call angular momentum, okay? Or it accelerates my body basically around a corner, okay? Now, what happens when we do that is, think about if you're like racetrack, right? If you're driving a car, you kind of go into the corner, you might kind of slow up to get into it, but once you kind of get everything kind of working around the corner, you can really accelerate and get things to come out of that corner with some speed. Same thing's gonna happen here as we go through and we go to hit the golf ball. When we are trying to make a swing, what I wanna see is I want to see people, as they start to work the club down, start prepping the golf club to work around their body. And the way that we do that is we have to push down. Okay, you gotta push down and then let that return happen where the push back from the ground is going to push your body up. What's going to happen is we're gonna get that club coming down and accelerating around us, which then lets us pick up more speed as we go through the hit. So when I want people to try to pick up more speed in their swing, what I like to see them try to do is get up to the top of their swing, press down with the lead foot, that club's gonna be already coming down, and then let that, that return from the ground happen which actually pushes them up and around in their swing, okay? This force pedal is going to help me because there's some give. 
so you can really feel the squishiness of the pedal. It's going to squish down and then it's actually going to return and bounce back. So it gives me a little bit of help as we do this. The other thing you'll see is I'm putting it underneath my lead toe because I'm trying to encourage. I don't want to push and fall forward. I want to push and go around the corner as we go. And if I can do that, I'm going to start picking up speed as we go. Okay, so got that one out there. My club speed on that shot was 93, which for a seven iron is really, really fast for me. Okay, didn't smoke it, I'd say that. I hit it decent. You can see my contact was really, really good as well. But you can see that ball for trying to go really all out at it, I actually got that ball out there a pretty decent amount. So that's good to have on this one as well. Uh, is trying to get that out there. So again, I find when people are trying to go for speed, they're able to kind of see that ball go straighter anyway. But we'll talk more about why that happens in a second. So that return from the ground, you saw the, the as I hit that shot, you saw that the force pedal actually flipped over. That's because I'm pushing down and it's coming back up. There is so much force coming that it's actually coming off the ground itself, right? That's what happens when we go to hit a shot. So again, when I see people that are hitting it short and crooked, okay, they get up there, they're, they're worried about, oh, I don't want to move too much as they go. And so they're just trying to guide it and they're not using their ground. They're the ground. So not only like that one, I just tried to swing with no body movement, tried to swing my arms and I swung at 80 miles per hour. So I lost 15 miles per hour, but then I also hit it really poorly and that ball's still offline and it's way short. I mean, that's just not a very good shot as we go through it. If I bring back in the, pe the pedal, okay, what I can do is let's go ahead. Let's bring it back, shift it forward, really pressing on that pedal and then let the ground return us so we get some acceleration. There we go. Hit that pretty good. 96 on that one. I like that. Hit that one a little on the toe, but which is kind of my miss. But again, you can see not that bad of a shot and I'm getting the ball out there as I'm going. Okay, so I can get more speed, which then can equate to more distance. Now, it's not going to just all be about, hey, you got to get distance because with speed, you have to get some contact with it. So again, as we're trying to hit the ball better and hit it straighter, one of the things that you'll see is when you try and actually load up the club and move faster, what's actually going to happen is it makes it easier to make better contact with the ball. So one of our launch monitor keys that if you saw our series on that, number one is you got to control your low point. You got to get your low point forward in your swing so you can make contact with the ball first and then be able to compress it. Or if you're swinging your driver, you need to be able to swing through and maybe your low point's not as far forward, but I can pick up speed and because of where the ball position is, I'm not going to actually have that low point too far back where I drop kick it off the ground or something like that. I'm going to be moving into the shot and actually taking that speed and putting it into the ball how I want to. When we do that, when we look at generating the speed and using the force pedal, what happens is when I push into the ground, you're going to notice that the center of my body starts to move forward. That's going to help me move my low point forward. Okay, so it's going to be easier to get to the ball first. Now, the other thing that's going to happen is when I get that return from the ground and I get pushing up, my body will continue moving forward. I can still move everything forward because my body is actually turning and that's going to allow me to continue to move that low point forward. So we get a bunch of freebies with this one by just learning, hey, I want to get my, my pressure, I want to get everything forcefully shifting forward and I can make things a lot better. So again, same idea, I'm going to push hard on the ground and let the return happen and let's see what our low point is as we go through it. Okay, low point there, 2.3 on the number. We like that. Swung at 94. 
able to get that ball pretty solid hit at 165 yards for me this is a seven iron that's not too bad so we're able to maneuver and get that low point to a point where hey we can get it to a spot we like now i can even try and push that farther forward by pressing harder as we go all right so we're going to go up let's feel the return of the ground and let's get that low point forward There we go, two inches, pretty good. And you can see that ball was hit really well. Club speed 95.5, pretty straight shot as we go through that one as well. So there we go, getting some speed, keeping the ball on the planet. And uh, yeah, we'll take that one. The last part that we talked about. So, so far we're talking about kind of, hey, we're getting some distance out of this thing. And you can see as we do this, we're still hitting reasonably straight shots as we go through that. Now we can work on that. You know, we don't say, hey, that's just good enough. We can start getting it a little straighter, but there's one concept that we want to make sure we understand as we go through. The club face is always going to be king in the golf swing. When we go to swing, we need to be able to keep the face as square as possible. Now, the way that we do that is we need to manage our rotation throughout the swing, okay? We have to manage the rotation throughout the swing. So to do that, as I'm going through, we need to create rotation. Well, how does that happen? Well, it happens by doing exactly what we've been working on. Think about it this way. Rotation is just torque, right? You're torquing and then something starts to turn. So the way I like to think about it is think of a torque wrench or think of a socket wrench where you've got something in the middle that you're kind of turning or tightening and you are going to grab on the outside and twist, right? And the longer away that lever gets, you know, you got more torque or you have more leverage that you can use to be able to create that rotation in the middle. So the same thing happens here when we go to the golf swing. What I see everybody struggle with is they say, all right, hey, I've got to rotate more. I'm going to fire my hips. So they do something like this, okay? That's not going to work. One, you're not gonna hit it very solid. Two, you're gonna get slower. And three, you're gonna hit it more crooked. So it's a very bad combo. The reason for that is you are not creating rotation. You're just doing it. We don't wanna do it, we wanna create it. That's a big difference. So the way we do this is when I go back and I push into the pedal and feel the return of the force from the ground, what happens is because I'm moving forward, that force is coming straight up from the ground because I'm kind of pushing into the ground. It's also kind of going back in a 3D world. But what happens is that's pushing on the side of my body. You know, the center of my body is here. It's pushing over here. So when I'm pushing and it returns up, it starts rotating my body. So I get that rotation in there. And again, it kind of feels like a freebie as you're going through. And what that's going to do that makes the club work around you. Think about our racetrack example. If I'm going around a track, if I'm going really, really fast, it's hard to turn. Same thing with the face. The fastest is going around, it's harder to twist it. So it likes to get very stable and then it just likes to go. So we want to let the creation of that rotation happen by pushing into the, the pedal let the return from the ground happen as we go through. And that's why when I see people and I work with people, they can hit really pretty straight shots when they start swinging faster, okay? They start hitting it a little straighter and they're like, hey, that's actually not as bad. You know, I, I just wanna hit it slow or, you know, I just wanna hit it straight. I'm not worried about distance. We're always like, hey, work on your speed. How are you generating that speed? Things are going to be a lot better. And that shot right there, not my greatest shot, but that's pretty good for a shot where, hey, maybe I don't feel like I'm doing everything I possibly could do to hit it straight, but whoa, that's actually not that far offline. It's only uh, a few feet to the right as we're going through. The face was 0.6 to the right of the target, and I had a little bit of a club path to the left, only a degree though. So we get things to work out. And I can always take it and say, all right, you know what? 
I'm going to go back. Let's say I want to draw it. Well, I can feel that pressure, but just feel my body staying more closed, direct my club path. Let's see what we get. Oh yeah, that's going to draw. So I can do that 3.8 out to the right. Face got a little closed there, but I can start maneuvering it a little bit as we go. But again, I think you're going to be surprised as you start working on this speed and saying, all right, hey, I'm going to work on creating proper forces to get the club to travel faster. And I'm going to see a bunch of freebies coming in where it's like, man, this is going to feel good. And I'm able to hit it a lot better, a lot straighter, even without trying. And then you can go work on hitting it straighter and all that stuff and controlling it, but I think you're going to be happy with what you see as you go through. So this device, really helpful to illustrate some key concepts that we have in the Golf Swing. One, you got to use the ground. You got to use your body. People that are trying to keep parts from moving or be too robotic, I think you're going to be missing out on some of the key things, which are we want to use force. We need to be pushing into the ground and seeing some return from the ground that gets things moving in the proper direction. Now, of course, are there gonna be some things, hey, if you got a wide open club face, are you gonna run into problems? Absolutely. We've talked about that on the channel. We're gonna to continue to talk about that. But you need to understand how, if you can swing the club faster, it's more natural. It's going to work a little bit better for what your body is doing. So learning to generate some speed is always a good thing. And learning how to generate that rotation. You're not doing it, you're creating it. That's the big takeaway that I want you to have. And that rotation will stabilize the club face and help you hit it straighter. So you don't wanna just say, hey, I just wanna hit it straight. You need to be working on proper mechanics that are gonna help you hit it straighter and farther. Both of those things are most likely going to happen. Your speed will be up. You're going to be able to control the ball better. So working on the ground, that's gonna be a big help. These force pedals have helped me a lot and hopefully they helped you illustrate that point to you as you went through this. So if you have questions about it, please leave a comment down below. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We got plenty more. I'm excited to be getting outside doing some on course stuff. So do not miss out on that. And as always click that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber already. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.